On the 1st of May, the small Swedish town of Eskilstuna, one hour west of Stockholm, went from this to this. The extreme right groups Svenskarnas Parti and Förbundet Nationell Ungdom had chosen the Sacred International Labour Movement Day and the city of Eskilstuna to spread their xenophobic agenda, Swedish jobs for Swedish workers. This did not go down well with the left-wing kids, who won't stand for extreme right marches on their streets, especially not on May Day, which is a huge deal in Sweden. They founded the organization 1st of May for All and began planning a massive counter-demonstration. We met up with them as they started gathering in the city center. Förbundet nationell ungdom och Svenskarnas parti, ja, de har väl rätt att demonstrera, men det har ju som sagt även vi. Och står vi 2000 pers i vägen så borde det väl de inse att de inte är välkomna i den här stan. Vi tänker inte acceptera att nazisterna ska få gå fritt på våra gator i vår stad. Vårt mål är att hålla det här fredligt och väldigt folkligt. Vi vill ha det som en stor folkfest. While more and more people joined Kim and his friends in the counter-demonstration, the nationalists started gathering at their assigned meeting point. Despite supporters coming from Norway and Germany, the turnout wasn't exactly massive. De som blockerar, de säger ju första maj för alla. Men varför, varför inte vi en del av alla då? Alltså, varför ska inte vi få uttrycka vår åsikt? The counter-demonstration soon gained some unexpected momentum. They managed to form a blockade, preventing half of the nationalists from joining their peers. The bloc nationalists eventually managed to break away, marching straight into a park where families were having picnics. Some kids from the counter-demonstration followed, throwing bottles and rocks at them. The nationalists got pissed off and trashed some poor guy's car in the process. When the nationalists finally began their march, Hundreds of people, everyone from thugs, dogs, grannies to the black bloc, stormed the streets to form a blockade. Then some troublemakers started throwing rocks at the nationalists, and it all erupted into violent riots, sending at least eight people to hospital with cracked skulls. After about an hour-long standoff, the nationalists started marching, protected by the police, but they were forced to take an alternative route. The kids from the counter-demonstration started running, taking a shortcut to form another blockade further up the street, but they were chased away by the riot police and their angry dogs. This process kept repeating itself, all afternoon. Like ferrets on speed, the counter-demonstration had become a living organism that just wouldn't budge until the nationalists had gone home. The police lost control over the city and had to call in reinforcements from Stockholm and other nearby areas. Realizing they wouldn't reach their destination, the extreme right groups decided to hold their speeches from the back of a rental truck, where only the nationalists gathered, the police and a few booing counter-demonstrators could hear them. At 6 p.m., their demonstration permit ended, and the police escorted the nationalists back to their cars. By then, extra police forces from Stockholm and the surrounding areas had arrived, and began mass searching the counter-demonstrators and forcing them into buses. Some of them broke away to bid the nationalists a final fond farewell. Oh, 
till frukost! Du käkar pizza till frukost! Vi mamma luktar cancer! Vi mamma är en pojke! Vi mamma är en pojke!